so welcome everybody. Uh, today, the project that we're going to be looking at is engraved jewelry and more. When we started working with this engraving tool, jewelry was the initial idea that came to us, uh, but we quickly started ideating with other kinds of materials and realized there's all kinds of applications for this awesome tool that we found, and we hope that you guys find the same value out of it that we do. So who are we? We are the K-12 Maker Lab team. Um, pictured on the left there is our fearless leader, Diane. She's also on the Zoom with us. Um, Diane, do you want to say hi to everybody? Hi, folks. I'm home trying not to give anybody germs, but um, we're all <laughs> happy to be here and welcome. Awesome. Uh, so I am uh, Justin Schmidt. I've been working with Diane on this project for a few years now. Um, before I came here, I was at Watertown Middle School here in Massachusetts, where I ran uh, a makerspace. Um, and one of the things I spent most of my time on was uh, working with teachers to develop meaningful projects for their classrooms. So it's a perfect fit that I'm here now doing this work. Uh, and I'm excited to share all this with folks. And Jamie? And my name is Jamie Shalell. Um, I have a background in music and music education and also in adult education through my work with the Girl Scouts. Um, so between the three of us, we bring a pretty diverse set of perspectives uh, that come from formal and informal educational settings. Um, so where are we? Right now, Justin and I are inside the Strobe Lab at the MIT Edgerton Center. Doc Edgerton, uh, the namesake of our center, is on the left-hand side there, pictured with some of his photography equipment. He was the pioneer in strobe photography, and his work enabled us to see things that you could never make out in real time with your actual eyes, like the very famous milk drop photos. And on the right is a fun example of uh, the tennis legend Arthur Ashe setting up a serve. Um, he had so many technical achievements and, you know, accolades poured on him throughout his life, not only because his pictures um, shed light on natural phenomena that we couldn't see, but also because of his artistic eye. So many of the pictures he took are just absolutely beautiful to look at, and I'd encourage you to look through his archives if that's something you haven't done. So on top of all of those achievements, Doc was also known as being a cool professor, and he was sort of a proponent of experiential learning before that was really a thing anywhere, before that was an idea that was widespread. Um, and he would encourage students to come to his electronics lab, which is located right across the hall, and work on their personal projects and sort of pursue topics that interested them outside of their assigned coursework. And it's that ethos that underlies our work as the K-12 Maker Lab, where we endeavor to bring hands-on experiential learning into any classroom. The Center is home to a bunch of different things. Uh, one of them is uh, MIT clubs and teams, so things like solar car, uh, who wins all the time and is really awesome. Uh, Formula One racing, uh, robot. Uh, there's um, BattleBots is coming back. Uh, there's a bunch of other um, First Nations launch. You had a list. I should have let you take this Yeah, one. First Nations launch, um, <laughs> the underwater remote uh, vehicles. So if you can make it and it can move, there's probably a clever team for it here at the Edgerton Center. Um, so a moment ago, I mentioned the electronics lab where Doc would encourage students to come and work on their own projects. Nowadays, that is a fully outfitted makerspace, which Diane and Justin uh, keep excellent care of. Um, there's a couple of MIT courses that meet over there. They're actually meeting in there right now. Um, and it's still a space where people come and work on personal projects like pancake printers and foldable skateboards and all kinds of fun things. And lastly, we have K-12 outreach. So uh, we do a lot of field trips for uh, mostly local schools. Uh, they come in and do fun STEM activities here. Uh, usually spend about a half day with our colleague Amy over there uh, in our classroom next door. And um, on our side of it, we run outreach to teachers. We have professional development opportunities uh, that we will plug at the end of this uh, once you've experienced all the magic of this first webinar. Um, and you can find all the written uh, and video materials that we create at k12maker.mit.edu. So today we will be using the Cricut Maker Machine and the engraving attachment to create personalized metal objects, whether they be wearable or decorative. Um, in this case, you do need the Cricut Maker Machine specifically and not another model of Cricut. Uh, right now, this is the only machine that supports the engraving function. As we mentioned at the top, our project ideation started with custom jewelry, but quickly spun out into lots and lots of other mediums that we're really excited to show you that definitely make this tool worthwhile to have in your arsenal. 
And so the examples that we're going to show you today include engraved jewelry, which you can see on the left. Um, they include this really cool technique with painted acrylic that we engrave into, which are the sort of light up things with the vase and the quote on them. Um, we'll do engraved mirrored acrylic. And then we have a couple other examples to pepper in as we go. So as we were uh, iterating on how we might use this project, we came up with a couple different things. You can kind of take a second to read these, just different areas where um, we thought this could be applicable. Uh, so it could be things that are more SEL based or more academic, um, a lot of things about personal expression and things like that. As ideas come to you throughout this webinar, feel free to unmute yourself and let us know what they are or drop them in the chat. Yeah. All right, so no matter which medium you're gonna go with for your project, there are a couple basic tools that you'll need to start with. The first is the Cricut Maker Machine and a cutting mat. We found the greatest success with this purple extra grippy cutting mat. Um, it also worked fine with the green ones and a bunch of tape on there, but this extra grip is very, very grippy, I assure you, and, and will just help along with the process. Um, inside of the Cricut, you'll need that special engraving attachment, uh, which is sold all on its own. Mm -hmm. And then to make the Cricut work, you'll need the Cricut design space. This is available on most operating systems, but not on Chromebook. Yeah, as far as I know, if someone wants to correct me, it would be wonderful news to hear that it actually works on a Chromebook. But last time I tried it, it was one of those people say it works, maybe it works, kind of works, sort of works, but doesn't work. Um, so uh, don't rely on it being available for Chromebook. Um, so for this app, uh, you do need a login. So you can decide what kind of workflow and setup works best for your classroom. What we do in our lab is we just have one login that everyone is welcome to share. Um, it just makes things a little more streamlined and easier to find projects that other people have worked on. Okay, so along with uh, the Cricut and the tools that you need, we also have some materials. So we have a bunch of different um, blanks that we got. So we just had a little Amazon shopping spree. Uh, and we got things like, I'm going to try to hold these up to the camera as best I can. We've got things like blank do dog tag blanks that you can use. Jamie's a got a star. star. Um, there's rounds tags in various sizes. Um, and then one we're going to see later that goes on a fabric bracelet, which we're going to demonstrate. You can kind of see it on the mat there. We'll look at those a little bit later. Um, and there are also jewelry findings that you can use. So we like these pre-made um, waxed cords that have uh, clasps. Oh, my God. Jamie clasped. and I both cannot think of the word clasp today. Every time we've talked about it, we paused. Um, these have clasps built in. Uh, and we also have waxed cord that you can use. You can tie knots uh, to make jewelry that way. We have earring backs. Um, I like getting the individual uh, findings that you need for a project versus buying those kits. Because I feel like regardless, you're going to end up with um, a bunch of stuff you don't need and not enough of what you want. So we also bought a giant thing of jump rings, which are just those simple little rings that you can close uh, either with that included tool or with a pair of pliers. Um, to connect things together. Uh, we have some examples we can show later of that. Um, and probably the most specialized tool that we ended up getting for this project is a bracelet bender, which you can see pictured on the lower side there, maybe a little better than you can see it with me holding it. But it just kind of has this little notch and you take those flat bracelets that are pictured right above them and go whoop with one side and then go whoop with the other side and then you have a bent bracelet. So we'll show you how that works later. So some other materials. Uh, so there's pre-cut mirror that you can get on Amazon. One thing to watch out for, God, I'm going to keep saying Amazon over and over again, but you can get it at craft stores, <laughs> various places. Let's not give them any more money. Um, uh, you'll see later, we want to engrave on the back of these pieces. So you got you need to make sure your mirror is uh, not adhesive. Um, I picked up a bunch of these inexpensive uh, edgelet acrylic panels. Uh, and these are really fun. It's 25 bucks for like a four pack. And okay. So on this, you can actually kind of see some engravings I did. These are pretty advanced. Like I did a lot of work in a graphic program to make these, but it looks in person, unless you get close, it looks a lot like a laser cutter. Cricut does sell these aluminum blanks too. And they have a, a pen you can get to kind of color in the parts that you engraved. Um, we picked one up. We haven't used it yet. Uh, there's so much stuff out there though. You don't really have to stick to the uh, um, Cricut branded materials here. All right, so now with an understanding of where we're going, this is how we're gonna get there. 
um, the first step to this project and almost every project ever, I imagine, is ideate. Um, so it's really important to think of not one, but several ways to communicate your intended message through graphic design. Um, there's all kinds of reasons for this, whether your intended image doesn't work the way that you want it to in the software, whether it doesn't communicate the way that you intend it to. Um, we recommend that people come up with at least three different ideas. And I always think of the old adage I learned at the conservatory, one choice is no choice. So give yourself lots of choices to choose from as you move through this process. Um, once you've thought of a couple different things, then we'll move on to the design step. This is where you're gonna create your own original shape using tools or upload existing shapes into the Cricut design space. And you'll adjust and scale your uh, images so that they fit on the physical material that you're gonna be engraving into. Then it's time to take things from digital to physical by actually doing the engraving. Uh, we'll set up the cutting mat, make sure all the settings on our machine are correct, and then just follow the flashing buttons to do the engraving with the Cricut. And then finally, depending on what kind of object you're choosing to make, there are some finishing steps, whether it be attaching it to your jewelry pieces or lighting it up with the edgelet um, or anything else you could think of. Yeah. So Justin, do you yeah. want to try making something Let's live? Let's do it. Let's make a thing. Let's do it. Okay. Uh, so uh, we are gonna just demonstrate, we're gonna do a little make-believe brainstorming here. Um, and we're going to walk through making a project. Uh, so our scenario is going to be that we are eighth graders that just got back. Um, I mean, I know I, it, it's hard to believe I'm already in eighth grade. I look so young. But um, <laughs> we're going to pretend we're eighth graders that just got back from our big class trip to D.C. And we want to make some memorabilia about the trip. And we're going to reflect a little bit on what we each found most important uh, about the trip. And then we're going to ideate our ideas and come up with the best uh Kind of figure out the winning design so to speak here so jamie what did you think was the most interesting thing about dc well it being the springtime the first thing that comes to mind for me is the cherry blossoms and how beautiful those are all around the basin um, but then thinking about the basin i also think of the lincoln memorial which is pretty iconic it's really grand it definitely makes you think of washington dc what did you enjoy seeing the most um i thought lincoln memorial was kind of cool um he's big um, I thought that the Air and Space Museum had the Star Trek Enterprise, the original Enterprise shooting model, and I really want to do that. Okay, that <laughs> is so interesting that that's what sticks out to you. Um, for me, that doesn't immediately evoke Washington, D.C., so I wonder if we should go with something that will communicate D.C. more immediately to the Okay, viewer. well, we both like Lincoln, so let's try Lincoln and okay. see what comes out here. So Good plan. Um, and now I'm going to stop being an eighth grader for a second, and I'm going to switch my screen share. Um, so first thing we need to do is, uh, before we actually get into Cricut, is figure out what we're going to do for an image. So you can see here we have a lot of stuff in our account. Um, a lot of these are like silhouettes and text and very, this is the moon thing that I made. Um, I did not mean to click on it. Sorry about that. Okay. So let's go ahead and start looking for something we might be able to use here. Um, so we're our topic is going to be Lincoln Memorial. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to come to the internet here, and I'm going to say, actually, I'm going to go over to, let's do an incognito window just so that um, we don't find stuff I've already looked up while we're looking here. So first thing I'm going to do is just type Lincoln Memorial, and this is probably what your students are going to do. <laughs> They're going to go Lincoln Memorial. They're going to find a picture they want to do. They're going to go to images. And they're going to say, ooh, yeah, I really like this one. I want to put this on my bracelet. Um, my computer is slowing down. OK, uh, so I'm going to take a look at that and and tell my student, uh, I don't know if this is going to trace very well. We have to think about our tools and how our tool works, right? So the Cricut Maker, any Cricut machine or any vinyl cutter, laser cutter, it's essentially a robot holding either a knife or an extruder or a laser, and all it can do is follow lines, right? It's not gonna be able to paint a picture or like print a picture like a printer would. It's just gonna follow a path. So if I try to do that with Lincoln and I'm engraving on a material, I'm gonna end up with something that looks kind of like my Einstein ornament that I made here. Um, hoping this is dark enough to show it. Let's see here. Yeah, there we go. So you can kind of tell that that's supposed to be Einstein there. Whoops, going the wrong way. Okay. Um, but it's not great. Like it's not, it's not really selling the Einstein to, 
to me. It's just sort of like, eh. And that was really the best I could come up with. I found a bunch of different pictures. I tried a bunch of different outlines. And it just didn't quite convey what I wanted there. So we need to look at something that's a little more um, symbolic or iconic, right? So I could encourage my student to do something like type in the word silhouette, maybe. And find something that might be like a, like a black and white image. Now, these are just getting like Lincoln's face. So maybe I need to be more specific. You know? Okay, so I could try something like this. Um, for, so Jamie brought up a good point earlier. The size of this thing is not that big. How big was it? You measured it for uh, It's three quarters of an inch tall of usable space and an inch and a quarter across of usable space. And I say usable space because you can't, really engrave into those little I'm not sure if you can see it but there's holes on either side of there uh, so you just have to be mindful of what you can actually put onto your material so if I take something beautiful like this silhouette of the Lincoln Memorial and shrink it down it's not really gonna come out that great I could try it but I don't know it might not be our best option um, so let's look at some other things so uh, one resource we really like is called the noun project so if I just google noun project uh, this is a uh, stock photo site that really focuses on doing like things that are like icons like they're really distilled down stylized little icons of things uh we've used these on our website in a couple places um you can pay for uh the right to use these things in commercial stuff but we're just going to use it freely because we're an education we're, we're educators and we're doing this with our students and it's covered under fair use so i'm going to come in here and type washington dc and just see what comes up Okay, so okay, uh, yeah. Can I put this on a bracelet? Maybe. Hmm. <laughs> Probably not great. Um, let's see what else do we have. Okay, so these are getting better. Like this, this might work. This Lincoln Memorial. Um, I think it might still be too small though when we actually put it on the bracelet. What do you think, Jamie? Yeah, that looks like it's going to be a lot of lines for this tiny little area. So maybe the Lincoln Memorial is not the way to go for this. Okay, so let's try the other option we had was the cherry blossom. Cherry blossoms. Cherry blossoms. Okay. Ooh. So here, I just want to make sure I'm not missing anything in the chat here. Okay. Thank you, Diane, for dropping that link. Okay. Um, cool. So we have a ton of options, uh, and some of them are really pretty. So again, me and my partner on this project, we're going to talk about what uh, is going to work for us. This might get too small, right? There's really fine detail in there. Not quite the icon that we're looking for. Um, let's see. Something like this could work really well, maybe. It might get a little too fine detail in the center there, but we could try it. Uh, what do you think, Jamie? Which is the, what's the one we want to try? What do you think? I like the one you just had open because there's no stem. There's nothing too small. So we're going to try this. And so what I'm going to do is say, get this icon. And my students are going to be met with a login on this page thing. I'm not going to make all my students uh, log in for this. So what we're going to do instead is teach them how to do a screenshot. So I'm just going to click on the icon. Again, fair use. We are in education. It is OK to use these materials this way. Um, and we are just going to take a screenshot here. So I'm on a PC. I hit Window Key Shift S. Um, now, uh, quick aside, if you're doing this with students on Chromebooks, or iPads or some other device and they don't have access to the Cricut software, you could have them do this and then throw this file on a flash drive or email it to the teacher or throw it in a Google Drive folder, whatever, however you uh, normally transfer things between students that way. Um, cool, so now I'm gonna go over to Cricut and we're gonna pull that in. So I'm gonna say new project. Oh, you can see my bad Einstein here, all right, new project. <laughs> And so to get that image in here, I go down to upload. And uh, we're going to say upload image. And I'm going to say browse. And I'm going to find it on my computer. So it is in my uh, screenshots folder. And I'm just going to click on it here and I'm going to say open. Okay, and then this is a very simple graphic. There's only one, it's just black and white, one color. So I'm gonna say simple. Okay, and then my zoom bar is in the way. Let me move that. It's never where you want it. I'm gonna say continue here. And hopefully this will be pretty easy. So 
Cricket wants you to pay for everything, um, and they're going to ask you to pay for premium so that you can remove backgrounds. Um, I'm just going to come over here and click on the gray parts and see if it will remove the background for me. Okay, so that worked pretty well. I can use the zoom in buttons down here and just kind of double check that I didn't miss any little spots. Looks good. Um, definitely show your students where the zoom in is. It's very helpful. Uh, last thing you can do, I just figured this out earlier, actually, is you can hit preview cut image, and that will show you if you missed anything that way, too. So that looks pretty good to me. Apply and continue. OK, we are not going to do print and cut. We're not sending this to a laser printer first or anything like that. So I'm just going to say cut image, and I will say upload. And just going to double check. Well, just double checking that uh, chat. Cool. So now to get it into my canvas, I just click on it over here, and I say add to canvas down here in the lower right. It's not the greatest workflow, um, but once you've done it a couple of times, it becomes kind of second nature here. Okay, so now I have my my art in here ready to go. It is way too big, so we need to resize it. But before I do that, I want to talk a little bit about the different modes, uh, the different operations in the Cricut software. So if I come up here, upper left where my mouse is, I can say uh, basic cut. I can do a wavy cut. I can do perforate. There's all these different things I can do. I'm going to come down to engrave. And when I hit engrave, you'll see what it did. It turns, just zooming in here, um, it turned my solid black path into two lines. So if this were, if I were doing a vinyl sticker, I'd have to explain to my students that you're going to end up with that skinny little piece of vinyl. In our case, we're going to engrave two lines next to each other. Um, at the scale that we're doing it, it might end up looking like one line when we're done. Uh, so that's just something to be aware of there. Um, and now we're going to scale it. Jamie, what was our size again? Um, it should be th no more than three quarters of an inch tall okay. and an inch and a quarter wide. Cool. So since three quarters of an inch is the smaller dimension, I'm going to type that in up here under height. Whoop, he says. And three quarters of an inch is 0.75 inches. OK, so that's basically all I need to do in the design phase. So you could add text. You could do other things in the Cricut software. We're not going to get too deep into the actual designing here, but uh, that is the basics for us here. Um, one thing that you yeah. do want to be aware of in this stage of the Cricut software is on the upper right hand side, you have to select the right machine. Um, yes. So if you have something other than the maker selected, like the Air or the Explorer or something else, um, the engrave function is going to be grayed out on that drop down that Justin just showed you, which is a good indicator that you need to make that change. Um, it's just a little bit tedious to double back and redo your design if you go forward without doing this now. So we like to remind people. Ask us how we know, because every time we have to go back because we have <laughs> we have two kinds of machines in the lab. So we're constantly forgetting. Uh, I'm going to save my projects. You probably want your students to do the same thing. Call this DC bracelet. We're going to save it. OK, so so far, for those of you familiar with Cricut, you're probably like zoning out right now because this is pretty much your common workflow. You bring a graphic in, you edit it, you get it ready to go. Now here's where things get a little bit specialized. So uh, we're going to switch to, um, actually, let's get it. I'm going to turn it over to Jamie because she's really good at explaining the two mats thing. You, you go ahead. Okay, so what you can see on Justin's screen right now is what I like to call the virtual cutting mat. And this is just a virtual rendering of this big purple strong grippy mat that I have in front of me. And so our goal at this phase is to align our design on the virtual mat with the location of the real material on the actual cutting mat. Um, so you do have to be pretty precise with these smaller objects. And the way that I like to go about it, and different people have different preferences, but for me, it makes sense to go right to the center of the mat at the six and six mark and do my best to align this with the dead center of the mat. I'm just going to squish that on there. I think that looks pretty centered up and down and right to left. Um, and then we'll just come in with a little bit of blue masking tape. Make sure that this doesn't move at all while we're engraving into it. One other physical setup step that we need to go through um, is on the maker machine. So you can see there's these little, on our machine, they're white uh, rubber wheels that are on this 
metal bar. These are called star wheels in cricket terminology. And you just want to make sure that those are spread out wider than your engraved material so that you're not putting any added pressure on the machine or on the thing that you're engraving. So now I think we can head to our virtual mat and go to the six and six mark and set up our flower that way. So uh, back on our mat here, our virtual mat. So when I click on my object, I get my grid. So Jamie told me it was on six and six. So I'm going to take my square here. I'm going to bring it down six and six. And now, again, this is what your students are going to do. They're going to just go, okay, good enough. So you got to remind them, did you zoom in and double check? So let's zoom in. And now I know that's the six and six mark. I want to make sure my design is pretty centered on there. And what I like to do is just do a visual check. Like I'll come over to the mat and I'll just kind of be like, okay, the top is about eh, a little less than halfway up and a little less than halfway down. And just kind of double check on my mat that we're in the same spot here just before I hit um, hit continue. Uh, so now I'm going to hit continue. Great. Cool. So I'm going to set my material. Uh, I have it saved in here. I have anodized aluminum. You can say browse all and find it. Um, if for any reason it's grayed out, you probably have the wrong machine set or you don't have the tool set correctly and it's saying that it's not um, compatible. So you just have to double check your settings. Um, speaking of the tool, before we go any further, um, actually I'll hit on the material. It's gonna say load tool and material. It tells me I need to load engraving tool in clamp B. So we talked about the engraving tool a bunch, uh, but we haven't really gone into detail what it actually is. Um, you can score these on Amazon or, or your craft store of choice. Uh, they are right now they're rocking 20 bucks for blade and housing, which is pretty great. Um, it's just this add on blade here that goes on the um, the housing, uh, which also can do like the scoring tools and stuff like that. So if you already have the housing, you can get the just the blade for a couple bucks. Um, so that's our tool. Everything's ready to go. Uh, Jamie is now going to load the mat. I'm going to stop screen sharing so that you all can see. Yes, yeah, so Cricut Machine has these very helpful flashing buttons that tell us what to do. So this first one loads in our mat. And we just want to make sure, do a visual check that this loaded in to where it's supposed to be and that there, it's not bowed out or anything, that it's a flat surface. Yes. So with all of those steps out of the way. Yep, I we're think we're ready to go. Ready to hit this flashing Cricut button and get our cherry blossom bracelet going. And it is incredibly difficult to um, watch while it goes because the housing of the <laughs> the cutter head is kind of in the way and it's all equally hard to take photos of. Unfortunately, we've tried a whole bunch, but um, it is kind of fun to watch when you can see it. And it was that fast. There we go. So we just hit the unload button to free our mat. And now we are ready to finish this piece of jewelry. Oh, now we can see our camera better. There we go. Uh -huh. Okay, wow, this is super grippy. <laughs> um, great. So for this um, type of bracelet applique. It's focusing for us. I think so. First of all, our design turned out pretty great for a shot. On here, it really does look like just one sort of thicker line that's engraved. You can't really see the two like we could on the screen, um, but we expected that. So here we go. We have just this cotton bracelet cord that we're going to slide through here. And then I can proudly present my cherry blossom bracelet to my project partner, Justin. Yay. Oh, can you put it on me? Oh my gosh, go. of course go. I can. Do Here we go. <laughs> this is totally not meant to be a dog tag. This is totally for humans. This isn't weird at all. Um, cool. Look at that. So this stuff I found, I just I just searched for um, three quarter inch ribbon and I found a cotton option a couple clicks down. Um, and it's it's really nice. It came in a bundle with a ton of uh, bunch of colors. Um, so we thought this would be really fun and easy uh, to do. Yeah. So also in terms of finishing, we did want to show you guys how that bracelet bender works. Oh, um, yeah. So I think that this view is going to be the most advantageous for us. So I'll stay down here. Um, and we just celebrated Pi Day recently here at MIT and around the world. So I have this Pi bracelet all ready to go. And I'll just slide the end in there. Give it a little gentle bend. It kind of makes this like crick crack sound as you go. Um, but we haven't cracked one yet, so I don't think it'll actually snap on you. Okay, that's pretty good. We'll slide it out, come around the other side, slide that side in, go crick crack. And then, ta-da, I am all ready to walk around campus in style with my bent pie bracelet.
Uh, Randy asked if we've tried this on a Glowforge. This would 100% work. There are settings for anodized aluminum in the Glowforge. Um, I actually bought business card blanks because I wanted to try to uh, laser engrave some for myself and see how that comes out. Um, this is, we're kind of avoiding talking a little bit about laser cutters today because we're trying to pitch this sort of as a way to get around not having a laser cutter, right? Uh, and it could be that you're using this as a way to learn some of these graphic skills and techniques so that you can push up to um, the laser cutter, say, when you get to high school or whatever. All right. Uh, so having gone through that project live together, um, we just had a couple of other workflows for the other types of materials that we wanted to show you guys. OK, so the first project that we want to show you that we made uh, as an example is this planetary bracelet. Um, it's one of my favorite things we've made, not just because I came up with it, but also because it turned out really good. Um, so my goal with this was to convey an interest in astronomy that I have. And so I came up with several different designs uh, that you guys might be able to see. They can see it, right? Yeah, one second. I'm just okay. trying to I'm trying to fix this one sec. Sorry, technical difficulties, as they say. Uh, I just got a little, I want to have it so that Jamie can hold this up without stretching across the room to show you. Thank you. And then I'll start the screen share again in a second here. There we go. Yeah. The Where's button. the object? Um, and then we'll just pull up a couple of sketches that I threw together. Yeah. It looks like it's still sharing. Are you able to see the sketches? Cool. Awesome. Cool. Continue. Um, so the first one I thought of, maybe a shooting star going like across the bracelet. Um, I thought of lining up the planets because each one of them is so individual. Um, I thought of maybe peppering in some asteroids with a satellite sort of floating through them, or maybe a telescope looking up at stars in the word wonder. Um, and so some of these I realized would kind of push the amount of space that I had available. This is pretty limited, especially in terms of width. Um, and so for that reason, I went with the aligned planets. And so I turned to our good friend, the noun project on the next slide. I keep getting distracted by the chat. Oh, it's great. Okay. Glad the chat is popping. I'm, it's great. Um, so here we are in the noun project. I found a bunch of different kinds of icons to represent the planets, and I experimented with what they look like in the engraved function with Cricut. Uh, so some looked better than others, and that's how I settled on the, um, the ones that I actually ended up going with. Uh, so once those were all put together and put into the engrave function, I actually used the align tool, which in this screenshot, it's grayed out, but it's right next to edit with a little pen. Um, that's just going to snap everything to exact alignment for you. It's really useful for projects where you have to be precise like this one. Um, I also went ahead and I typed in my measurements. I made sure that it was uh, four tenths of an inch tall um, and it, just five inches across, so it didn't exceed the length that I had. And then finally, one of my favorite steps, I aligned on the virtual mat with my material on the physical cutting mat. You can see I didn't use the center of the mat for this one. I was up in the upper corner near the two inch mark. Um, so those all aligned, we um, put them through the Cricut, hit the engrave button, um, and then moved on to our final step, which is finishing. All right, there we go. Well, yeah, so there's some really uh, great pictures of me using that bracelet bending tool that I just demonstrated. Um, so hopefully the demonstration was a little clearer than what those look like. Uh, but that's how you go from flat plain bracelet to engraved aluminum bendy bracelet. Sorry. This next medium was super, super, super fun to experiment with. Um, this was painted acrylic. We have a lot of scraps to cut them into smaller pieces um, and try to make them into something useful for this project. So the first step um, was to cut these from large sheets into smaller bits and then to paint them with an acrylic paint. Um, the key here was to kind of achieve opacity with your layer, like not letting too much light through without having the paint be super thick um, so that the engraver doesn't smudge too much or make too many um, chunks come off as it's doing the engraving. So my inspiration for this project, uh, it was during Black History Month. Um, so I was thinking about the many wise words of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. I also found this cute little icon of him from uh, the Noun Project. And I thought about these quotes and how I might be able to communicate to a viewer really quickly exactly what was going on. And I realized that the one in the green is sort of a great balance of concise and iconic. It's a very well-known quote. And I thought that it would translate really well to this visual medium. 
Um, so for this one, I didn't use any outside resources. I just did this entire thing right inside of Cricut, uh, which is a great way to work. I used that text tool that's on the left-hand menu um, and just added multiple text boxes that were different sizes and I stacked them on top of each other. And then in order to keep these all together, going into the next step, what you have to do in Cricut is use the weld function. And that just means that it's not going to rearrange things for you to be helpful when you go on to the next step. It thinks it's helping you, um, but we know how we want them and we're gonna keep it there by using the weld tool. Cool, so uh, in setting up the mat for this, you'll want um, your painted side to be up, whether you're engraving into the front or the back of what you're doing. Um, if you're engraving into the back of what you're doing, you want to use the mirror function so that when you look at the front of it, it appears the right way. Um, but for this, we're engraving into the front. We don't have to worry about that. We'll just keep going. And ta-da, after the engraving, um, I just propped this against a windowsill and ended up with this really awesome looking um, lit up quote. And there is beauty in the imperfections of the paint. This is not an object that comes out looking perfect. It's one that comes out looking like you made it, which is an important option to have. All right, now this one is the opposite. This one does come out very professional looking. This is mirrored acrylic. Um, and like Justin mentioned earlier, when you're sourcing your materials, you'll just wanna make sure that you have one that is just regular old mirrored acrylic, no adhesive, no nothing extra going on. Um, again, this was the result of me standing at the laser cutter and looking at all of our scraps and thinking, what can I do with this? Um, so zero here was to prep our materials and set up this little piece of acrylic. So I thought, what positive affirmation would I want to see next to my own face on this little piece of acrylic? Because everyone, you know, you got to be your own biggest fan. So I came up with a bunch of different ideas and eventually landed on, I've got this. So again, I turned to our friend, the text tool. Um, here, instead of welding, I used attach as the function to keep the letters all together. This is just going to make sure, again, that nothing gets rearranged for you when you go to the next step. And here's our mirror. So because we're engraving into the back of this material, but we'll be looking at it from the front, I use that handy dandy little switch there that's on the virtual mat stage to mirror the text for me. And about 20 seconds later, I had this very professional looking little mirror that says, I got this. I actually took this uh, to one of my colleagues in the hallway and I showed it to him and I said, oh my gosh, look what I made, look what I made. And he said, why are you showing me this laser engraved mirror? We do that all the time. So just, it, it really does turn out looking good, you guys. I'm not naming names, by the way, about who that colleague was. It wasn't me. It wasn't Justin, for sure. And, okay, and finally, our last medium that we're going to explore in this section is um, charms. Charms can be put onto earrings, bracelets, necklaces, uh, wherever you can put a charm. We set out to go for some school spirit with this for our local high school uh, here in Cambridge. I thought about putting text like go Falcons or go cross country. Um, that colorful logo there is the Cambridge Public Schools logo, but I don't really feel like that will translate directly to school spirit. So that's why I ended up picking the falcon that's over on the right, the mascot. So we showed you guys how to bring a screenshot right into um, Cricut, but here I just didn't feel like doing all that clicking to remove the backgrounds. And so instead of doing that, I opted to turn my raster image into an SVG image, a scalable vector graphic. So this takes something that is pixel-based and turns it into something that's path-based, which is a little bit easier for some machines to read. Yeah, and uh, the other good thing about pick SVG, because sometimes you get a better or different result. And sometimes that can be an unexpected result that works out to be kind of cool in an artistic way. Uh, so I like to, when I teach Cricut, I like to do both methods where I'll show doing it in the Cricut software, and then we'll come up with an example like this that uses Pick SVG. So it's a good tool to show your students. And this was our first go with the very sticky cutting mat. That tape turned out to be a little bit of overkill with this with this crazy sticky mat, um, <laughs> but it worked really well. <laughs> and that, oh yeah, and that method will work if you only have the green mats or the yellow, like the fabric one, you can just tape the heck out of it and it'll, it'll stick. Mm -hmm. So once those were fabricated, you can see we tested two different size falcons. Um, and that's because iteration is a really important part of design. We didn't know what we were going to like better. Um, and I actually have them right here. We did test putting things on the back of them as well. Can you take us to this camera? Yes. Lovely falcon on the front. And then on the back, we put CRLS, the name of the high school, sort of in the shape of a heart, um, just to emphasize that you can use both sides of this material. And this example has that cool, like, it's like a bracelet, right? Oh, yeah. One? So um, this just uses 
just a regular old piece of cord. You tie basically two knots. You tie one knot onto this side of the string, and then you tie the other knot onto this side of the string, and it makes this hoop that's adjustable, kind of fun to play with. Cool. So I think that takes us through uh, the demonstration well portion. Uh, yeah, so you can read the list. There's a lot of things we really like about this. Um, it's great for introducing graphic design techniques. Uh, you can really differentiate it and scaffold it however you see fit for your students. Um, you could give them just a set of things that they have to position or sky's the limit, have them ideate. Obviously, we love having kids ideate as much as possible. Uh, and it's really expressive and fun. You can do it for school spirit and all those other wonderful things when you just want to get the kids in to use the tools. This is a great one. But it also, uh, one of the things I was throwing around is doing for an example was to actually take like characteristics from a, a character in a novel and do something that they would wear that would express something. So there's a lot of like academic tie-ins you can imagine for this one. Uh, yeah, we just, we, we dig it. Yeah. And so we have lots more upcoming events, um, including two more webinars in this series that we're running this spring. Those are going to be on Tuesday, April 2nd and Monday, April 8th. Um, the first project, Rubber Stamps with 3D Printed Molds, uses Tinkercads, 3D printing, and then this really fun um, remeltable rubber that Diane found uh, to make expressive objects. And then the Felt Funsters combines textiles with electronics, which is sort of an unconventional pairing um, and also, again, really fun. Yeah, good stuff. And... We have some workshops coming up this summer that we'd love to invite you all to. These are uh, on campus at MIT. Uh, we have four days of making here. Uh, we have Make by Hand, which is doing things with real crafting tools. We might do a little bit with shop tools and textiles. Uh, digital fabrication is focusing on tools like the Cricut or like your Glowforge or your 3D printers. So we'll talk about doing some 3D modeling, more graphic techniques. And this is, oh, let me back up a little bit. All of these are based around doing actual projects. None of this is just us lecturing for two hours and then having you go try something. It's very like build the thing, go through the steps, and then think about how you can adapt it. Uh, Wednesday, we'll be doing electronics. So we focus on really simple and accessible electronics. So doing things with uh, parts that are easy to get and inexpensive, not buying like snap circuits kits and things like that that can break and you know all that stuff. Uh, and then Thursday, we do physical computing. And that one is all about bringing coding into the real world through things like Microbit, uh, Scratch with a Makey Makey. We have a couple other little uh, fun things we like to do on that day. Uh, and then in the fall, we are so jazzed to skip slides by accident. <laughs> so jazzed to announce that we're bringing back uh, our master making in the classroom offering. So that is a basically a semester long, like a 10 week uh, course that we run. Uh, we have four sessions where we meet on campus uh, and those are spread out over 10 weeks. Uh, and in between, we have individual coaching uh, set up, and we encourage folks to kind of work in um, uh, working groups together over that time. And you actually will deliver projects. So you'll, you'll come up with some of your own ideas. You'll you'll get coaching on them, and you'll actually do this with your students. Um, so you're learning by doing, not just learning by listening to us talk at you. Um, so we're super jazzed about that. Again, all this is on our website, k12maker.mit.edu. And now we'd love to hear what this tutorial inspired for you and open it up to questions, comments, concerns, and chats. And say thank you all so much for being here. This was a lot of fun to present for you guys. Yeah. I'm a um, Mac user. I'm the only Mac user on our team. So I also turn to a free application called Curve for a lot of my SVG uh, converting and editing. But that's only a Mac thing right now. Thank you. I was wondering how you put the <laughs> curved metal into the cricket. So. Uh, oh, <laughs> yeah, I, I was like, we have a cricket here. I thought, oh, that's gonna be tricky. So now I get it. Thank you. Yeah, so we use the uh, that bender. This thing very inexpensive, and I was actually thinking it could be a fun project to three D print one because it's not a lot of force. This stuff bends very easily, um, so you just have to kind of re replicate that shape, and then you could probably do it in Tinkercad. Uh, could be a fun challenge for a student. <laughs> That's a good one. Uh, I really like I really like the project. I didn't know that uh, you could use the Cricut as a laser cutter in that like with metal. I wouldn't have thought of that or with wood. I'm, I'm curious to look that up now. Yeah, the I'm still blown away by how good this acrylic came out. Like, granted, I mean, I did more work than any student is ever going to do to make the graphic for this. But like the 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 concept is there and it looks almost 
except for some alignment stuff it looks really close to what you get on a laser cutter so it's pretty impressive save your school ten thousand dollars and just use a cricket <laughs> well, no 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 get your ten thousand dollars get your get your laser cutter if you can <laughs> So right now, the uh, Cricut Maker 3 is a good choice. Is that like the best one that you all th can think? So if you're going to engrave, if you can find a Cricut Maker old one, um, that is probably fine. I don't know if they still sell the older models. They do have the Air. They do have the Maker, Diane. You're shaking your head yes. Okay. Um, so if you can get a cheaper older one, that's fine. They all have the ability... Um, so the reason, and actually, I think this is kind of silly. I don't think it actually has to be limited to this machine. But um, the reason it can only work on the maker is because it has that little gear on the top. So what it does, it goes into the slot two, and that actually allows the tool to spin around. So it will spin to clear chips off of the engraving tip. I think that if you just had a sharp stylus and you said spore, you could probably do this on an air. Um, but that's an off the book. That's like not a recommended use. I can't tell you to go break your machines, but um, I, it would be interesting to experiment with that and see um, what you could do. This is one of my favorite um, ones that I made. So with the um, painted acrylic, we experimented, I experimented with um, painting on the front of colored acrylic to kind of get the pink to show through, but then also painting on the back of clear acrylic. So uh, <laughs> we could engrave right into... Um, the paint and have a clear image happen. Yeah, so gonna, let's see what happens when we try to light up Orion with the edge lit. Ideating live here. Ooh. <laughs> Look at that. So that's there with the go. black paint, so you can't see through. This is actually pretty cool. That is actually cool. Teaching a beginner metal smithing class for enrichment. Oh, that's awesome. But I've been, I'm a huge user of Cricut, been in makerspaces forever, but I've just moved to a school that doesn't have a laser cutter. So I've been wanting to try this. And so I was really happy to see the uh, the webinar, but I've got a lot of students that are interested in jewelry making. These are sixth through eighth grade and um, being able to just teach them about properties of metals and some of the ways that you can work with metal to make a simple ring or ear wires or um, necklaces. Um, the specifically the school mascots having them use a saw to cut out like a, a pendant so they're they're very excited so that's what, what i'm going to do but i'm definitely going to include this as a starter anyway because the the cricket machine i think if if you're opening a maker space is is one machine you sh absolutely should have um it's I, i've i've worked with third graders and you show them how to make a sticker and they can do it very independently and i think that i just looked up I was just searching up blanks on Amazon for the aluminum and acrylic and it very inexpensive materials comparative to other things and I think that this is something that students could really come into the makerspace and do at any point in time. Uh, if you do want the things like the the mirrors we could not find the mirrors um, in like the mirrored acrylic in cut pieces but find somebody with a laser cutter to cut them for you. And yeah. that is not hard to do anymore because cutting eighth inch acrylic just isn't hard. And the mirrored acrylic cuts as easily as everything else. And if you're really, really don't have anybody and you can are okay with square, you can score and snap them. Yes. Yeah, I've, I've done that this year, the scoring and snapping. Um, but I do have, um, I can easily send a sheet to a friend and have her cut cut the pieces for me because I I do think the mirrored acrylic is something that kids would really 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 enjoy oh gosh kids love it because so you give fun. them mirrors it's like they get to look at themselves all day yeah that's amazing well I can see them being posted inside the lockers you know the, the kids they you know, yeah. posting inside of lockers with affirmative sayings and mm -hmm. um you know there's it, it's just kids will come up with the best ideas but anyway. yeah good thank you for that sure Justin and Jamie, I have a question for you. Yes. Um, it looks like those bracelets are for adult sizes. Do they make one for <gasps> smaller I'm hands? I'm so like glad you asked. Jamie's on it. Apparently, we have the kid size. Well, we made the kid size. Didn't you cut this? Is that correct? This was so long ago now, I don't quite remember. Um, you want to go back to that camera? 
Um, yeah, so we thought the same thing that this is actually even big for my wrist. This is the pie bracelet that I just bent. Yeah. Um, so Justin took, I believe it was, what did you use to do this? Sharp, sharp pliers? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I might use wire cutters. It looks like I sanded it too. I might have filed the edges a little bit. Um, that is interesting to question if they sell them that size. Um, that would be great. But yeah, it's so easy. Like if I were to take that and bend it a couple of times, it'll just snap. Um, very easy to work with. So what did you do? Bend it and then cut it smaller? No, I think. Or I cut it first. Used, I might have just used wire cutters and then okay. filed it down a little bit. Because you said that you might do a 3D print version of that um, tool. So maybe we could yeah. do a 3D print version of it smaller. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's a good idea. That's good. There were ones we bought. Um, there's no way you'll be able to see it on the Zoom, but uh, we bought silver ones um, that are just like plain metal. I don't think they're, they're very mildly magnetic. So I don't think they're, I think they're plated aluminum or something. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, there you go. Ooh, shiny metal. Uh, we did some engraving on this. It's not as readable or cool looking, but it is kind of subtle and fun. So if you're doing it with like older kids, they might be like, that's trashy. Oh, that's nice. I can put my, you know, whatever's significant other's name on it or something fun. All right. So we are just about at time. So I guess we will wrap this up. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. We put a ton of work in getting this first one going because it's been a while since we've done this. So thank you for for joining us and supporting us. Uh, hopefully we'll, we'll keep in touch. Um, I will send out an email to everybody that registered once all the resources are up online and hopefully you can share those with your friends. Um, anything you want to add? Just thank you guys all so much for being with us. And uh, if you do any projects using this, we'd love to see what they are. So shoot any one of us an email and keep in touch.